Ladies and gentlemen, uh, a new month has come, and with it, a new uh, version of Clockwork Empires. Now we're up to version 38. Uh, the reason I'm starting on this pause screen is because there's something uh, we can observe when I initially start the game. I'm not going through the tutorial dialogue, because nobody needs to read that again. Although, that said, if you haven't read it at least once, I strongly encourage you to do so. Uh, as you'll observe... We now start with seven colonists. Uh, this was deliberate on the part of the devs. I'm going to unpause here now. In internal testing, it was uh, jokingly, jokingly called seven dwarves, uh, but is now officially referred to as uh, seven colonists, which is a little more apt. Uh, this is actually a nice starting spot. There's food and trees. and <clears throat> Yeah, anyway, if we look at the work, uh, work group interface here, we notice we have seven overseers and no workers. Um, this has had, well, so it was deliberate on the part of the developers. Uh, they wanted to see uh, how this would affect, or well, I guess they knew how it might affect gameplay, but they wanted to, if, to see if it would make a more compelling uh, play experience. And uh, having played through a, a little bit prior to recording this, I can say it significantly changes the nature of gameplay. Um, now, whether or not it's an improvement is, uh, I think it's a matter of personal taste, right? Uh, first, let's get the carpentry. Uh, one thing I will say immediately is that uh, because you have so few workers, you cannot frivolously build humongous buildings. In fact, uh, you'll want to build them as small as possible. So they require the least amount of labor. It's not that you won't have the resources, but you won't have the available workers. So I used to build my buildings really, really big, which I, uh, I don't recommend doing anymore. <laughs> right, so I've got the carpentry uh, blocked out. So we've got our, um, our exclusively overseer population. And they're still going to do tasks, right? And then, um, oh, but I should also point out, uh, I'll come back to the work crew interface itself in a bit. So your worker, uh, your overseers will still perform tasks off of the job list here, um, but they no longer start with any workers. So the arrival of new immigrants is very, very important. You will actually pay attention to your arriving immigrants this time, or well, in this situation. And also for people who are as an introduction to the game, I think this is a really good this is a good step in the step in the right direction in that you have fewer colonists to keep track of initially. So you'll be able to pay each one more attention. You'll be able to uh, let's take Victoria and uh, Iron Burden here for an example. She has memory, she has traits, uh, she has a backstory, she has skills down here at the bottom. You're more likely to uh, pay close attention uh, to the way things are going on the individual colonist level. Now your colony will continue to grow. You'll get new immigrants. Uh, and in fact, the option to accept more immigrants is now, it's a more meaningful choice, right? So that's, it all contributes toward uh, the ability to make more meaningful, meaningful choices. Again, I'm going to come back to the Sid Meier, uh, Sid Meier's uh, axiom, uh, saying it's attributed to him. Basically, uh, a good a good game consists uh, to paraphrase. A good game consists of many meaningful choices, uh, and the important word in there is meaningful. You can have your player make choices, but if they're trivial or they only affect the game in a minimal way, you may, they may as well just not be in the game at all. Um, and so, as happened. In the earlier iterations of Clockwork Empires, um, there was no penalty for, or there was, uh, accepting immigrants was a no-brainer. You would just always do it uh, because, you know, it's not diff it wasn't difficult to keep them fed. Uh, there's no penalty for not taking them. Uh, and, you know, more workers is always good. With further refinement, we've seen that uh, some of the immigrants are prisoners, so accepting them means you are accepting immigrants who are conceivably uh, more unruly, so less likely to 
act in an orderly fashion and uh, declining the uh, criminal immigrants actually uh, applies a prestige penalty and there are and because food has become uh, immigrants now eat only once a day uh, but food production has slowed so you might not want to grow your colony as quickly as previously because you might not be able to keep everyone fed which is a, and hunger is its own thing entirely right uh, but there are penalties for not accepting immigrants so all of that uh, all of those come together to make um, the issue of immigrants a really interesting thoughtful decision now uh, rather than oh, every whatever every five minutes I get three more dudes up uh, so that's uh, that's just and that's why your starting colony of just seven overseers is uh, it's a compelling starting scenario it still remains to be seen whether or not it's uh, it makes for the best uh, the best play experience I mean the jury's still out on that one right it's it's only it's only been implemented in game for a very short time I think the developers are actually soliciting feedback they like to see whether or not players hate it or not um, personally I think it's okay it's interesting I'll have to play more to form a final opinion on it so for those of you who have been uh, watching say my previous playthroughs or those of others uh, you'll notice the pace of development is considerably slower than it was for various reasons uh, chopping trees takes more time oh and uh, I'll point out these progress bars in a second chopping trees takes more time so uh, in general doing stuff farming and mining and chopping trees and stuff takes longer than it used to and together with the drastically uh, reduced number of starting colonists um, initial development is considerably slower which uh, you know that's a gameplay decision what it means for this video is that there'll be long <laughs> it's gonna be a lot slower than uh, than maybe <laughs> viewers may have uh, may have been used to um, and practically speaking uh, sometimes it's gonna be a little bit dull so I'm you may see me cutting footage uh, I'll still be doing this live right but uh, you'll see edits where like nothing exciting is happening uh, and hopefully I you know I'll still come back to the interesting stuff because there's a whole bunch of new interesting stuff but there will be times um, when nothing exciting is happening I'll uh, take this one for example uh, colonists are now significantly less likely to work at night for instance uh, they will they have jobs even if they're not actively sleeping they'll still be less likely to do jobs and they'll be more likely to do things like gossip and stand idle and eat and you know admire fine machinery and stuff like that um, so it's not like they work 24 hours all around the clock all again again this slows down the pace of the game uh, incidentally one thing that was added with this patch was uh, a tweak to the line of sight system so the colonist sight radius is significantly reduced at night you notice there's only a small bright spot of uh, civilization in the encroaching dark which is probably as it should be I mean new colony strange new land who knows what awaits you out in the dark right could be monsters uh, although this is new Antipodia so uh, there's a reduced probability that it's that's literally monsters Uh, another ramification of the or well a related ramification of the reduced colonist uh, scenario is that you don't assign them to do trivial things because you don't have a lot of workers so like I've got like the smashed crates here and the stumps and stuff and uh, okay I can just got clear terrain because they're kind of ugly but I don't want to do that frivolously like I normally I just highlight the entire colony and you know clear terrain um I don't really want to do that anymore but again because I have so few workers so having a reduced workforce makes the things you do choose to do more significant um, yeah what I was just, uh, what uh, else was I saying 
With regard to the UI, you'll notice name tags now automatically pop up when I get uh, when I'm sufficiently zoomed in. Uh, that was uh, just another little thing the devs added. I think it's nice. Uh, although I wish I could zoom in. Personally, I would like the name tags only to pop up when I'm zoomed a little bit closer. Uh, but you know, it's no big deal. They don't they don't block anything, uh, and I think. It's nice to be able to uh, like a, passively have them on when I'm at a sufficient zoom level. Uh, so that's all cool. Uh, as I was pointing out earlier, um, which is when I should have pointed it out because they're none are visible now, uh, there are progress bars for practically everything. Maybe we can watch Victoria Ironburn watch a demonstration of... Uh, Come on. Okay. So there are progress bars for when colonists are doing things, uh, particularly chopping trees, farming. I think when they're building, um, when they're building workshops. Uh, okay. Well, I'm gonna mine some stone here, and then you'll be, you guys will be able to see. And basically, you'll be able to see how close to completion a particular task is. Um, oh, there we go. Here's a. Here's a progress bar. This is Eugenia Ironson. Build, oh, there's a lot of iron in this colony. Building a door on, on the back of the carpentry. Right? So we see the resource has been delivered. A worker has been assigned to construct this module. And uh, the progress bar is slowly filling up. Um, I'm not going to force you guys to watch this whole thing. This is, this is a little bit dull. Uh, however, now you will be able to uh, visually ascertain how good someone is at doing things, right? So everyone, if you look at the bottom here, has a construction and repair skill. And the more someone does it, the better they'll be at it. And the better they are at it, the faster it'll be. So you'll be able to appreciate how much faster the progress bar fills up. Uh, you'll, you'll have an actual visual indication of somebody's skill in something uh, improving. And the door's done. Ta-da! So, progress bars in motion. And same here for the uh, mining stone. Huh, sure filled up that uh, stockpile quickly. I'm not gonna bother with the uh, food filtered stockpiles yet. I don't think it's an issue. Although I do think we're gonna have to start worrying about food. Uh, in fact, I'm going to set up, I haven't done this in a while, but I'm actually going to set up a farm very, very early on in a colony's life now. Uh, let's grow some cabbage. So again, I'm taking it slow because, uh, like, by this point in any other play, or in the older playthroughs, uh, the carpentry would have been done. I probably would have started on the kitchen already. Uh, there's pro I would probably have chopped down a bunch more trees um, but things you know the pace of life has slowed way down with the confluence of uh, several deliberate tweaks I'm uh, I'm trying to keep the job list relatively uncomplicated what I really need at this point is more immigrants so I can get specific jobs done more quickly Let's uh, harvest these nearby lingonberry bushes. Oh, okay. So I have the opportunity to call in a favor. The only favor I can afford is the extra criminals. Selecting this option gives me between one to three criminal immigrants. Oh, and also, uh, first of all, someone interrupted my forage. There we go. So. A bandit camp has spawned somewhere. Five bandits somewhere. I mean, they might be clear on the other side of the map somewhere in the dark. Or they might not. They might be very close. I'm going to order our soldiers to shoot any bandits they see. Oh, and a suspicious goods event. Victoria Twist is apparently this colony's black marketeer. Uh, we got some stuff. It fell off the back of a zeppelin. Do you want it? We can accept it for... Um, uh, Accepting it will cause us to lose one prestige. So I'm just going to say no for now. 
we don't need any of the more specialized goods that uh, might, we might get out of the smuggler. Not quite yet. Was, all of the initial stuff just needs stone and wood and stuff, which we can handle ourselves. Later in the game, when we're bottlenecked and we need, need like we need copper pipes or we need buckets of cogs, I uh, I have greater I would then have greater incentive to maybe take a chance on uh, you know gray market goods. So we've got the carpentry built. Uh, before I assign a work uh, work crew there though, so you'll see that uh, huh. Well, of the three immigrants. Actually, if we scroll up a little bit, um, oh, it doesn't say. When we accept immigrants from the Empire who are not criminals, it will actually tell us uh, their occupation. Whether they're an overseer or a, you know, a commoner, uh, what their old specialty in life was. If you take three prisoners, they just go directly here. Ah, some's, what happened here? Mildred Steelhook has destroyed an iron pipes in a fit of, oh. Those are very precious in a in a community that cannot produce its own metal goods. Damn your eyes. Let's uh, actually... So Mildred Steelhook. She... Uh, I've paused the game here just so we can take a look at her info pane. Actually, she interrupted the work crew talk I was using. So I'm going to... Okay. So the three, the three criminals we got as immigrants, uh, they were assigned automatically to the various work crews. Two of them actually had military training, uh, which is why even though we only had one military overseer, we now have two soldiers as well. Because uh, generally speaking, immigrants with the military training attribute get assigned to existing military squads. One of those colonists, criminal colonist with military training was Mildred Steelhook. So that's who she is. Now, she had a temper tantrum. Um, let's see. Well, being... Um, so, the criminal Im uh, immigrants are never happy about being forcefully conscripted and shipped off to the colonies. Uh, so that already makes them more prone to anger. And frequently, criminals also have the brutish trait. Which, uh, again, increases their propensity toward destructive behavior. Which is not necessarily a bad thing in your soldiers, actually. Uh, however, this trait, in addition to being angry, led her to destroy a thing in a temper tantrum. Um, so that's why that... So... Uh, work has been done to colonist... Uh, the colonist personality AI, which I... Which is pretty cool, actually. Um, it hurt the colony, which kind of sucks, but it makes uh, it makes it for a more interesting overall simulation, right? Okay, uh, as I was saying, the carpentry workshop has been completed. I will now assign a work crew here, and yeah, uh, let's just make ten planks for now. Uh, a new thing that was introduced with this patch was the airship mast. So you may have noticed when we started the game, uh, we got the usual like airships, or air, para crates dropping from the sky directly on our colonist spawn location, which is often leads to injury. Being struck by a crate will, will frequently give a colonist a persistent injury, and if a colony accumulates enough injuries, they may die, or at the very least, it will affect their personality. They'll be they may become fearful, um, they may become cowardly. Uh, it's not a not good news, news for anyone involved. Anyway, I now have the option to build an airship mast, which means the crates will actually be targeted. Um, let's put them over here. It's a thing your colony has to build. It needs at least one brick um, and some other resources I cannot remember. Let's just clear the area here a little bit. And what it means is things that arrive in crates, so favors from the Empire, food, materials, uh, they will tend to be around the airship mast rather than directly on your spawn area. Uh, I'm going to take more immigrants. So if we look at the bottom right here, we got non-criminal immigrants. Um, so we randomly got a miner, a laborer, and a naturalist. Now right now those job titles don't actually mean anything. And they 
actually stop being miners, laborers, and naturalists as soon as you uh, assign them somewhere. Oh, wait a second. Not the naturalist. The naturalist is a specialist. So Rowena Ironwright, she will actually execute the, uh, the various explorer commands, which is pretty cool, actually. Let's take advantage of that now. Rowena, I want you to explore here. Uh, yeah, so one guy's working on the mast, a couple more are chopping down trees, we have a bunch of progress bars to see how things are going. Rather than build a kitchen, uh, I think I'm actually going to build a lower class house so I can... You know what, I need to, I need to flatten some terrain. I was going to build some buildings, I was like, there's very little flat land here, despite appearances. So. Um, let's flatten out this area. <sighs> so, uh, I, this is one of those lulls in the game when I, I don't really want to assign any more jobs to my severely uh, limited work crew. Uh, so the mast has been completed. The next time we get airdrops, it'll be around this area, which is important, actually. In addition to, like, bonking your columns in the head and causing them injuries and things, uh, I think the most destructive thing dropped crates can do is land on your crops, because they actually destroy crops in, a, like, a nine square or a three square, three by three square area, which can be devastating because crops take a long freaking time to grow and they're very important to keeping your colony fed. Uh, oh, oh, this is a new event. Okay, a bandit wishes to defect to our colony. Uh, a bandit from a gang encamped on the outskirts of our humble colony has made it known they wish, to, they wish to join us, basically. So we can accept him, in which case we get a new colonist. Um, we can reject him if we accept him, um, the other colonists aren't happy about it, and I believe we lose a prestige. Uh, if we reject it, um, I guess he doesn't join. Well, let's let's accept him. Oh, let's see. Grover's Sweet Crew has a new leader, Zilfia Crew. Oh, that's oh, that's his name. His name is Mr. Crew. So Grover Crew has let was the leader of Grover's Sweet Crew. He left the uh, Grover Sweet Crew <laughs> Bandit Gang, and so he's actually walking. He's actually walking over to us now. Uh, he, his leadership in the gang was devolves to uh, the next ranking member, who in this case was named Zilfia. I hope they weren't married or something, or it's the the Crew Crew. So, anyway, I've accepted this bandit, and he will. He will eventually walk over to uh, to my colony. He's not too far away. And as a bonus, he will have explored all of the intervening territory. So one thing that means is that the crew, of which there were, I believe, five, uh, one of them was actually defected. Because he sees, uh, I guess he sees, oh, we have farms, we have, we have berries. You know, uh, he longs for a life with toilet paper and... All the niceties of civilization. Uh, so he's on his way here. The former Grover Sweets crew uh, is now Zilfia. What the, the? Yeah, Zilfia's crew. And there's a new button here. We go up to factions. Oh, it's still Grover Sweet crew. Okay, I guess it doesn't get renamed. Uh, it will be ironic then when they come to fight us. Um, so uh, you'll notice the faction button here. As we encounter new bandit crews, they will pop up in this list. Uh, it displays what our policy is to the, our standing policy shoot on site, or, you know, um, def only defend the colony, or, and then when they attack, the option to fight or just let them take what they want and hopefully they won't kill anyone. Uh, also, the same applies to, well, right now there are no discrete fishman crews, but it will display the uh, policies, and then again, your policies and known cults or the list of known cults and how you intend to deal with them and then 
Um, I assume they're just reserving the space for features yet to be yet to be implemented. Uh, policies regarding the Empire and what the Empire thinks of you. I believe Grover Sweet has... Uh, where is he? I haven't assigned him to a work crew yet. He uh, just gone to sleep in the workshop. Fair enough. Let's get you in a crew. There's a bunch of new stuff. Uh, uh, I got so excited about talking about UI. and uh, There's a bunch of new stuff I haven't covered yet, but I don't want this particular video to go on forever. Uh, so I'm going to cover the new stuff in subsequent videos. A lot of it is events. There are a whole bunch of cool new events. Uh, some of them are AI uh, tweaks, uh, and things like that. Again, uh, observe the colony is at a very, very early state of development, even after a full like episode of like a real time development. Uh, but there's been more than enough to keep us occupied, right? So uh, maybe this is a, a step in the right direction. So I'm going to wrap it up here. Thanks very much for watching. My name is Alfred. It's Clockwork Empires as uh, being developed and published by Gaslamp Games. Um, it's Clockwork Empires as uh, being developed by... Oh, yeah, I just said that. Gaslamp Games. Uh, you're currently in revision 38. It's available on Steam. Uh, if you're interested in checking it out, now is a good time, I think. It's seen a lot of uh, polish. Uh, uh, hopefully you will turn in, uh, tune in for subsequent episodes. Well, thanks very much for watching.